Hey everybody, it's Matt Newton again. Just wanted to touch base and give you a synopsis on what we're going to talk about. Well, first off, um, let's just get right into it. I kind of wanted to get my book for you guys to read so that, um, well, I'll read it to you, but it's, um, it's kind of what I want to write. It's about, um, my journey as a Christian. And, uh, let me just start, start off for you. It's called Captivated for Christ by Matthew Newton. For I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ that lives in me. To be captivated, I could say I am overcome by Christ or taken in awe of him. Yet this quote, to be crucified with Christ, is the closest thing we find in Scripture by being captivated by him. While I attended a Bible college in the Midwest as a soul student, I wasn't just captivated, I was secluded for Christ. One thing that Paul experienced when he said that he was strengthened through sufferings, having been cold and naked and without food, I had been given a dorm that had no hot water or heat. Down the hall was a one bathroom with hot water and the only other people living in the row of residential apartments was a couple from the south that were there to run the elderly facility of the college function. Miracle Valley Bible College was a once in vibrant bustling college that was up and coming for pastors and evangelists in training. Sought to make they sought to make an impact on the world through the spreading of the gospel. Given many years of non-attendance and wear and tear on the property, I was the only member. After I graduated high school, I wanted to become a pastor. They welcomed me with open arms and enrolled me in Evangelism Explosion and other theological courses. I was more than happy to attend, wanting myself to make an impact for Christ, being captivated by Him. And there I was, the only student, one night, praying and crying about what I couldn't recall, but the tears were flowing. Having felt lost in this new place, being the only student, and not grasping what I was called to do in this desolate place where there was no water. And just like that, a rushing wind from on high filled me as I saw high into the heavens, and I received power from on high. I first began to speak. I didn't know what I was saying, really, but all I knew was that I was speaking in tongues. And this was a renewing spirit I have never felt before. It made sense, finally. I had come to this place to receive the Holy Ghost. That, and for that only reason, was my purpose for the shame in being the only student, leaving my parents in awe at why I was doing this all, made sense. Becoming a college dropout to a Bible co to a high school dropout, oh, excuse me, sorry, a college dropout, at the Bible college was the only reason that the religious leaders shunned me at the Bible college because of my current situation of having no hot water or a proper place to bathe. So I left the school and met a true holy man one night by the name of Clarence Dyson, a current military man and a leader of Genesis Church of God in Christ. He found me broken and lost one night at a jack-in-a-box and gave me his business card. Two years later, I would have been deacon for the Church of God in Christ and going strong. Most of my writings in this book came from the inspirational services we had at that church. The two and a half years that led me to meet my spiritual father, an African-American man and a white boy who needed a father. Let's take a journey of faith and find out where it leads us. It led me to the cross and I hope it will lead you too. So that kind of is a introduction of the book I want to write, and um, it's kind of cool because I've never written a book, um, but uh, it would be nice to write a book about having um, walked a certain walk, and maybe people will find faith because of my journey, and... Um, you know, it's like Billy Graham's book, The Journey. Um, you have to take that walk out in faith, and it's going to lead you through some mountains and some valleys, but 
the valleys are never too low and the mountains are always going to be high so um david said though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i shall fear no evil and um you know we have that 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 stronghold to hold us we have the the rock to stand on jesus and um he'll never let us go he'll always be there for us he'll always guide us you know he'll always share with us what we need and bless our hearts and in our minds to have him in christ and just love on us because we love him and he'll always be there for us so um i'm gonna prepare some some things and hopefully i'll get back with you and thanks for listening and uh talk to you later